Well, Shaw, everyone. So I wanted to go through some lot on grammar, um, but I don't really have time to edit like a nice video, so we're just gonna kind of keep this as a screen capture, and then maybe I can make a better looking video later on. I just don't have time to do a lot of video editing right now. So this is part of the Iodon website. Um, I have lodon.iodonconlinks.com, and that has links to different stuff, but mostly we're gonna go to the wiki book and the dictionary right here. So the wiki book is basically the grammar that I have taken, I haven't like one-to-one -one copied from like the um, Laudan book, but I've gone through the Laudan book and I've gone through some of those Amber Wind lessons and so I kind of compiled this free um, I guess open source kind of book, but it's up here on the internet. It's free. Anyone can edit it if they find corrections or want to add more stuff. Um, I think one person has added on to it. So they are in the, she's in the credits as well. So the first thing, we'll just go over some of these. The sounds of Ladon. Really, I have a video I'll link to. I have a video with the sounds and then I took the IPA sounds from the Wikipedia pages so that you could get the most uh, correct sound. <laughs> uh, especially with this, because I can't really make that sound. I just kind of have, I just kind of hiss <laughs> when I come across that sound. Um, so I don't know, maybe I will try. This is just how I tend to pronounce things. One of the problems is there's not a lot of recorded media available. Um, of, for example, Suzette speaking lot on, uh, there is, there was a tape that you could buy with the original dictionary, and I, there's like a small, oh, that's not it, podcast where she's being interviewed and she says a couple lines of stuff, and I think I also have these linked on um, the channel as well. So we can look at all of these and hopefully the sound works on the computer. So um, William here has the audio seat or the audio tapes really and made one example. Then on page 30, there is the first of the brief readings at the bottom of the page. I will read it straight through. Be eril mefe with mene debedosheth wa. Mede with be methiral and doneth wa, methir with said daneth, ishlen ra, menere mede len, ish methira, len doneth menedebe, menade mede, ish methad len ra, id mede edana, be aril meden len neneth wa. Yeah, so that was this whole thing. And it's kind of hard to make it sound um, fluent since, like, I don't speak it on a regular basis with anybody. Um, I mean, I don't really speak it at all. I usually just type it out. Um, and I have like the grammar memorized, but I have to look up terms. So let me find the other example. But there's the... Again, I'm not editing this, so it's just going to be whatever it is. I have some old ones. Here's the sound of Ladon. I feel like... Was there a part in here where I put clips from that podcast? I don't know. Yes, this is where that clip was. Really? I so it was from a podcast. So let's go here. You say... Uh, the woman was joyful. That's it. A little lad with the and that means that he felt. So um, one thing I want to point out is with a lot of languages, the letter I sounds like an E sound, but that's not true in Ladon. So make sure that you're using like an E eh sound, like big. So a e b l e, uh, big e hope. Oh, oh, 
moon, u, th, j, sh, kind of like a sound or something. <laughs> ba, da, ha, la, ma, na, ra, wa, ya. Also notice that all of the sounds are very soft. You don't have any of like the really sharp sounds like ka and stuff like that. Um, and then there's accent marks. So I tend to make it sound like kind of a rising or falling tone um, just because like I took one Chinese class for a semester and so that sounds better to me to ha like kind of go like lo lo kind of like that. Um, otherwise, if it's like a vowel by itself and not with it next to another one, I'll just try to again make it kind of like a high tone. Um, so for instance, uh, okay, and then another thing is we don't put consonants together, we have to split them up with an eh sound, and then we don't put vowels together unless one is accented and they're the same vowel, um, then we split those up with an H sound. So for example, let me maybe zoom this in. We have the word grass, hesh, the word place, hoth, and so we wouldn't say hesh hoth. We would make it sound better and say hesh hoth as for a park. Or ra is not, in is understand, and ra hin would be misunderstand. Or, I mean, I guess if I wanted to say not understand, I would say in ra, because you could put the ra after the verb to make it not blah. Um, and then accented verbs. So I say laudon or alon, <laughs> something like that. Um, there are some words with a br sound because just mistakes were made, I suppose, or oversights. Um, but you know, languages are inconsistent sometimes, so that's fine. Um, the general hello phrase is Will Shaw, which means let there be harmony. Aril for later. That's what it literally means. And then there's a transliteration guide. So I have more of that in that other video that I'll link to that has the sounds of Ladon. So let's look at the next thing. The grammar in Ladon is different from the grammar in like other languages. Like when you're learning Esperanto, you can kind of say, okay, I want to say the cat is big. La cato estas granda. So that kind of, you can almost map it one to one to Esperanto. But with Ladon, there's a different form. For one, there's not an is word, and um, there is a way to say is sentences, or this is that sentences, but the way it works is you kind of, you have your verb or adjective first. It's not really considered or classified as a verb per se, but it's, um, think of it like if you wanted to say this is red, you would say like to be red. Now, oh, my, that camera gave out. Well, you're gonna have to watch me on the bad camera. It turns me, it looks, makes me look green. So, um, basically your adjectives can be used like verbs as well. It really, it's not a really good way to describe it. It's just that the verb or the adjective goes to the beginning, followed by the subject of the sentence. And then if you wanted to, you could add to the noun after that. So it's just building, but generally you have your, we'll get into the other markers in a minute. You have your verb and then your subject. So uh, two word classifications, content words and function words. So I guess your content would probably be, yeah, well, here's the thing about the adjectives. Um, so for instance, if we wanted to say the person is old and we're gonna ignore the flags for a minute, balin means old and with means person. So you would say balin with old person, but you're not, it's not literally saying old person ad adjective wise. We would have to add a marker to make that an adjective. Um, we're saying to be old person. The person is old. Um, oma with teacher, to be a teacher, person. Person is a teacher. Um, and then if you were saying like this person is teaching, om is to teach. So om with, and so that would be the person is teaching. Teaching, person. It's just a different word or order. So for instance, we have 
Be aya nanalwa. The sunset is beautiful. Um, aya is beautiful. Nanal is sunset. Um, the child thinks. Be lith hawithwa. So lith is to think, hawith is child, and so on. I could read these out. I guess I. Is that better? <laughs> uh, we have be ilashrulwa. Um, be bodiboda lewa. So bodibod. <laughs> I sorry, I like whenever I speak in just American English, I want to mispronounce everything. Um, this is like program, I think. Uh, I think this is like line and line, like line of code and line of code, which makes the word software. So if you put the a uh suffix at the end, you're a doer of that thing. So then a bodiboda would be a programmer, or a oma would be a teacher. Um, or a student would be a study person. Bedi is study or learn. Be bedi ha newa. So the student, the study part is bedi, and then you have to split up those vowels. So you have ha and then a. And ne is you. So then if you want to practice, there's some example things you can translate. I have a little comic here that you could um, try to read, and it has a, it, this solution in the bottom. So that is that. And then let's just go over the speech act morpheme and the evidence morpheme because those are the important parts and we'll do the other ones later. So in addition to just having your verb and your noun in the sentence, generally your sentences will begin with a speech act morpheme, morpheme to declare like this is I am stating, stating something or I am asking a question or I am requesting something or I am commanding something or I'm promising something, or I'm warning something. So it's made explicit. Um, and if you say multiple sentences together and they're all gonna be declarative, you don't have to keep saying bit every time. You can just kind of do it the first time and then continue on. But here we have some examples. If we said be bedi ha ne wa, you are a student. Ba bedi ha ne, you are, are you a student? Um, and we don't have wa at the end, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so then we can say bo ulanene. We're saying you study, which usually you're not. Sp oh, which camera is it? This one. <laughs> usually you wouldn't command people to do things. Um, they say it's like usually for a small child. And then if you wanted to request, you would so say like bo ulanene, please study. Or I promise I'm studying be ulanene wa. Or you need to study. Warning. Be them ula ninewa. So them is need to. Um, and we can, I think I have a grammar part for putting those two verbs together, like want to do dancing or want to study or need to study and stuff like that. So that'll be later. Then at the end of the sentence, we usually have the evidence morpheme. And this isn't needed for your questions. This is really mostly needed for declarative statements. Um, so if we use wa, that's like known to me because I've perceived it, whether it's a feeling I've had inside internally, or I've seen it, or I've sensed it in some other way. Um, we is supposed to be, it's self-evident. Like, I guess right now, if I said the sky is gray and you went outside and you saw the sky is gray, that would be self-evident. Um, perceived in a dream, so you could say, I dreamt my cat barfed on my stuff, <laughs> I don't know, um, and use wet at the end. There's also, you haven't experienced it firsthand, but secondhand, and you trust the source, so you could use wa. And then uh, if you assume it's false because you don't trust the second hand, you could say wa. And if you wanted evil intent, you'd add the LH marker, the like <laughs> sound. <laughs> Again, I can't really do it. Um, so I just kind of approximate it with like a hissing sound. Um, imagined by the speaker, hypothetical, or like used in stories, like there once was a princess named Bob. Uh, wool would just be for hypothetical scenarios. And then to just say a statement, but you admit like you don't actually know anything about the thing. It's like sometimes my husband will ask me like, what does this mean? And I'm like, well, from context, maybe it means this, but I really don't know. Um, you would use like, whoa. So 
Here's some more examples. Be hal with wa. The person is working. I have perceived it myself. I have seen that they're working. Uh, be hal with we, or we. Uh, the person is working, as anyone can see. Um, be hal with wa. The person is working, so I'm told, and I trust the source. Be hal with wa. The person is working, so I'm told, but I don't trust the source. Um, be hal with wo. Hypothetically, the person is working. Like maybe you could say, well, let's say if somebody is working on something and then this happens, you know, that kind of thing. And then, um, be hal with wo. Sorry, sometimes it's hard to make those sounds. Wo. Be hal with wo. Uh, this person is working as a guest, but I don't have evidence. Um, so again, you can kind of leave those off if you are using the same sentence structure each time. And clearly with when asking a question, you don't have evidence, you're asking a question. So, and then again, we have uh, ra, uh, you can use it to negate verbs as well. Then if you wanted to say yes, that's m. So you could be M for yes, Ra for no. And then if you wanted to invert something like Thal is to be good, then Ra Thal is the opposite, to be bad. Um, and not everything is like a binary like that, but you know, or Balin is to be old, Ra Balin is to be young. Um, or again, you can put Ra after the verb to say not, like Be Shud Lewa, I am busy, or Be Shud Ra Lewa, I am not busy. So again, Here's some quiz questions. I will put the link to the wiki book here and next time we'll go over some of the other stuff, but hopefully that was helpful. Um, assignments for the, the computer science students in the classes I teach now, so okay. <laughs>